So there's my board. And I, I want to double check a few things. First, I want to go up and I want to say, well, do I have everything connected? So I can check and see show unrouted. There are no unrouted connections. Yay, I didn't miss one. Sometimes it's really easy to miss one, especially if it's small. So that means I have no unrouted connections. The other thing I want to do is I want to go up here to routing and run what's called a design rules check. But before I do that, I want to check change its settings. So go to this auto router DRC settings. And I want to change this to say homebrew. There's three options. And it's just trying to tell you the, the different settings for the design rule check and the auto router, which I'll talk about in a second. So that's homebrew. I can say, OK, homebrew, it's designed to make the board a little bit easier to build. And that's what we want to do. So now I'll go back up to routing and say design rule check. And it'll say your sketch is ready for production. There are no connectors or traces that overlap or are too close together. The design rule check, it goes through your board and it makes sure your traces don't overlap and that they don't run too close to something that they shouldn't. Let's say that we had a trace that did overlap even when it shouldn't. Let's pretend that I messed something up and I had this running like that. So this wire now runs over top of that pad when it shouldn't. And I go up and I do design rule check. It'll show me, oh, hey, you've got issues here. It highlights them in kind of that orangish red, but you can also click and have it highlight specifically where the problems are. So it's showing you, oh, that's an issue. Well, now I can run back and I can fix that by pulling that up and running my design rule check again. Sketch is ready for production. Your design needs to pass the design rule check. If it comes up with any errors, that means that your design won't work if you get it created. So your design rule check has to pass or uh, your design will not work. Now the design rule check does not guarantee that your design will work. It just guarantees that you don't have traces crossing each other or running too close together. I'm going to go back into core and if I go down and I go to PCB view, there's this item called logo for text. I'm going to drag that in there. I can change it to say like my circuit. I can make it say whatever I want. And now, right now, uh, I just put a logo on my board, but it's it's set for what's called silk screen, which means that if you if you send this off to a professional board house, they will print all the black uh, drawing that you see here in ink on your board. Uh, but if you're not going to a professional board house and you're doing this in something a bit more um, a bit more basic, uh, then you would have to change that because I want to write it in copper. So I'll say copper top. So now that would be written in copper at the top. So I could say that, you know, my circuit, and now it's written in copper. You can also do a little graphical logo if you want, if you have one. But, you know, don't do anything too complicated, because again, this has to be built by an actual either chemical etching or physical milling process. The last step is to go up again to routing and do what's called a ground fill or a copper fill. Now I want to do a copper fill on both the top and the bottom. So this just says top, and that's because I have this configured. So I'm going to change this again to both layers. And I'll go back up to routing, ground fill, copper fill, top and bottom. And what a copper fill does is a copper fill goes around your circuit, and all that blank space that was there, it fills it in with copper, and then, be sh and then it makes sure to cut out around your traces. The reason for this is pretty simple. When you're, when you're creating the PCB, the base unit is a f covered on top and bottom with copper. And so uh, when you're creating the PCB, you have to pull off all the copper you don't want. Well, that can be, it can be really time consuming to pull all the copper off around my circuit. And so what I'd rather do instead is just leave it there if it doesn't matter and cut around my traces so that they don't conduct. So I do a copper fill on both the top and the bottom, and that'll make the milling process go faster and ideally probably make things cheaper and easier as well. When you want to export your PCB, uh, you have a few options. You can export as a PDF or as PDFs, and that's a good process to go through because it will allow you to print, and we'll, we'll look at that in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and say etchable PDF. So now when I pull that up, you can see it, it exported a whole bunch of PDF files. And the one I, I'm worried about is the sense of time. Let's see. Uh, copper bottom mirror? No, not copper bottom. Copper top mirror. Now how about just copper top? So I'm going to open up that. And this is what that looks like. So I look and I say, oh, you know, all those nice, like, 
easy uh, text that was showing you what things were, uh, all that's gone because this just shows you everything you see in black is copper. It's going to end up on your final board. Um, and so this just shows me where uh, there's not copper and then these holes in the middle are just holes you know, for parts. So this, for example, is the eight pins of my 555 timer. In the middle will be holes, then copper traces around it. So this is my circuit from the top. And I can also look at my circuit from the bottom. Once again, I can see that. So you, you'll realize that my circuit's a lot simpler on the bottom than on the top because I did most of my traces on the top. So I only have a few traces on the bottom. There's no logo on the bottom because I didn't add one. I only put that logo and copper on the top. Now one nice thing you can do, I'm going to go back to the top uh, to the top image again, is if you take this PDF and you print it, and in this case I say, you know, I want to scale not up 100%, I want it exact. I don't want any scaling at all. If you're printing this from Adobe Acrobat Reader, it would be like scale to fit is none or something like that. When I print this out on a printer, it comes out actual size, meaning that if I print this out on a printer, it's actual size, these pins will be spaced properly. And what you can do, and this is important to verify you got all your parts correct, is you print this out and then you physically push your parts through the paper in all the correct places to make sure that they fit properly. Because if you get this PCB made and you had a mistake on one of your parts, as in, oh, I accidentally used the wrong kind of resistor or the wrong kind of LED and the spacing is wrong and now my part doesn't fit, well, then you're in trouble because you have a part that doesn't fit. So what you should do now is you should print out this PDF at the top, and you should push your parts through on the paper. All right, so another feature of fritzing that you may have other people talk about or that you may see is called the auto router. Now in auto routing, fritzing tries to run all of the traces automatically for you. And so uh, you first glance, you may think, oh, that's a really great feature. Um, I'm really glad that it can do that, so I don't have to do all the work you just did. But auto routing, uh, i.e. picking the ideal trace runs, is actually an NP-complete problem, which means it's really hard to do well. But let's see how it does. So if I go up to routing and I say auto route, it'll try automatically to run my, to run my traces. And so now I can go up and just, let's see how it did. Let's do a design rule check. It says, oh, it found some problems. So there's wires overlapping that shouldn't be, et cetera, et cetera, but it looks like it's all in one basic place. So if I wanted to, I might be able to fix that up manually. It looks like the problem is right here in the middle. So maybe what I could do is say, well, it looks like it's this trace that's causing trouble and this trace that's causing trouble. So I could just delete those two and try to run them manually myself. So this one, for example, I'll just run like that. And this one, maybe I'll just you know, run it manually and see if I can do any better than the auto router did. Because it looks like it just ran it too close to the chip. So make sure there's no 90 degree angle there. Okay. So now let's zoom out a bit. See if my see if that passes my design rule check. It did. Okay, so I cleaned up that issue. Um, the auto router can work well for you depending on how well you get your chips lined up. So in this case, it worked reasonably well. It only had one major issue. But part of that is that I already intelligently lined up all of my chips, made its job a little bit easier. So you can try it at first, but uh, if it makes a huge mess and there's a lot of errors when you do the design rule check, I would recommend just routing it manually. But the choice is up to you. So the auto router is there as a potential possibility to help.